I'm so happy to be able to speak with you all today about a big issue in my field, which is education. About one year, one, mo one month, and one day ago today, I had to start a whole new chapter in my life, a life committed to learning and to music. I've had the great privilege of traveling all over our country and all over the world as a teacher and a musician. And yes, it's true, I am a drummer. But today, there's no hidden set of drums, I don't have any cool tattoos, nor a rad hitchhiking story from my apartment in Brooklyn. I am fascinated by how music reflects a culture, especially in their style of drumming. Some cultures' drumming is deeply rooted in tradition, largely unchanged for hundreds of years, while others wouldn't dare repeat a beat, constantly striving for innovation. So if music reflects a culture, what do you think a culture reflects? As a little guy, I did well in school. I was actually told time and time again that I wasn't particularly bright, but what I did figure out is, is there's a game to play. Making the grade, acing the test, high exam scores, doing these things had little to do with the subject matter, and I figured this out around nine or 10 years old, and you know what? It felt awful. Because I loved the subject matter, all of them. I genuinely loved learning. I was born that way. We all were. Since I wasn't particularly bright, but I had mastered the grade game, I was the perfect fit to be a teacher, right? Now don't worry, I didn't just pass on my game playing skills onto my students, but when you think about it, what would you have me do? Impress upon my students the importance of personal growth, but at the expense of the almighty GPA? There's no winning that game. And yet, it's the game many students and teachers are forced to play. And I could handle that as a student, but not as a teacher. Now, rather than mastering the game, I'm committed to changing it. I've had to learn so many things on my own, not provided in school, so as a teacher, I vowed to always give my students exactly what they needed from me, which often put me at odds against the institution. As a musician, perhaps the greatest drummer of all time, Mr. Buddy Rich said, you only get better by playing. Buddy Rich never studied a day in his life. He focused on experiencing, doing, and creating. And just as music is one of the many reflections of a culture, a culture is a reflection of its own educational efforts. And I believe the single greatest issue we face in the world today is a fundamentally flawed system of education. Our culture's daily news feeds are filled with absolute madness. And I feel much of this is rooted in not what, but how we educate ourselves. Now, I understand this is a bold claim coming from a simple music teacher and a drummer that doesn't even have tattoos. Education is a touchy subject because it shapes much of who and what we are. But to change our news feeds, we must change the game of education. Changing the system starts by realizing we are the system. The system is not some hidden away boardroom occupied by a choice few. No, the system is us. And I believe to truly innovate inside the classroom, we must remember that we were born to learn outside of the classroom. TED is a generally accepted authority on thought and new ideas, and we've all seen tons of TED Talks, but have you actually gone to their website? On their education page, the very first line reads, how do we change education? Reimagining school, there's a growing consensus worldwide, the systems are broken. I don't think the systems are broken, I think they're exhausted. And you don't need me or any other educator up here providing further defense of this truth, but I want to make sure that you're aware of the most common arguments. It's simply outdated, rooted in ideologies older than our country itself, mandated by all 50 states in 1918. Exactly 100 years have gone by, the world has radically evolved, yet the process of education is largely unchanged. It's a one-size-fits-all model on a fixed time frame, cognitively clumping us all together, boxing our minds and pushing us through in assembly line fashion. The obsession with assessments. We test, examine, and GPA our students to death and to new levels of stress and anxiety, 
often destroying their imagination, curiosity, creativity, and most importantly, their self-respect. And it's a big bureaucratic business. The United States alone is rapidly approaching total annual expenditures on education of $1 trillion, yet many of our schools lack basic facilities, basic technology, and our courageous teachers remain towards the bottom of what we call middle class. We're still doing this not because it works, but because it's what we've always done. Our culture values tradition. But how do we want to approach education? Is deeply rooted tradition? 100 years of innovation has brought us so much. We can now talk to our toasters. We've come so far. Imagine if our students could process information as easily as our appliances. Alexa, learn algebra. Imagine if the assembly line had only stuck to cars and didn't include our kids. I have this thing that I would do with students when they would take issue with something. They would come to me very, very flustered and they would say, Mr. Eagle, I am very flustered about so and so and such and such. And I would say, okay, well, first, let's all stop and let's all take a big deep breath. Now, let's address the problem. We are the system. And I have three things for you today that you can do in your daily life to help influence and change the game of education. Number one, accept your role as both a teacher and a student. Now, we're all already pretty good at telling people about what we know, but that's not teaching. Teaching is less about imparting knowledge and more about providing guidance and support. You are a teacher because no one has had your experience and all of us stand to gain from your perspective. You are a teacher, everyone around you is your student, and your world is your classroom. You are also a student of life, developing a love of learning. If you've lost that love of learning, simply observe children. They want to know everything about everything, and they only ever stop. We only ever stop being curious and creative because they're told to. Realize your instinctive love of learning. Remember your childhood wonder of the world because you were born to learn. Accept your role as a teacher and a student. Number two is identify passion. Now that you've accepted your role as a teacher, you must first identify the passion of your students. Start by asking, by observing, by listening. Let's take a very, very common passion of many young people over the generations, video games. Now, despite my gameplay and mastery, I am not a gamer. I fell off that boat a long time ago when I couldn't beat Mike Tyson. Couldn't do it. Guy's tough. What exactly do your students love about video games? Is it the awesome graphics? The imaginative characters and worlds? Is it the connectivity with other players? Is it the technical stuff? The coding? Help them discover why. And you're likely to find that what's often viewed as a common distraction is actually a gateway to their most unbelievable ability. Learning begins with passion. Number three, do stuff. Put passion to work with purpose by doing things. It is remarkable how much we actually learn through basic tasks. Experiential learning is far from a theory. It's actually how you've learned most of what you know how to do. Not from lectures, not from memorizing exams. You learn through personal discovery by doing, experiencing, and creating. To paraphrase some of my former students, <clears throat> we have to do the things to learn all the stuffs. Right, Mr. Eagle? Correct. How do we assess doing? I just did this thing, check. They just did that thing, check. Nope. The best exam, the most telling assessment of someone's deep knowledge and understanding of something is their ability to assist others, to teach it. It's easier than ever to do this with basic technology, building a simple website, sharing your personal journey of growth by embracing social media, starting a simple YouTube channel with the specific intent of helping others. If you want to do it, you simply need to do it, and you can always pause and assess by asking yourself, how well could I help someone else with this? Accept your role as a teacher and a student, Identify passion, do stuff. Imagine 
living this simple process. Imagine the influence you would have on others. Imagine the positive impact on your community, demonstrating to your schools your way of learning. Schools serve communities, not the other way around. I've spent my entire life in education. I lived it as a committed student, then I became part of it as a teacher. And for nearly 20 years, no matter how effective I was, the interest of the institution always superseded those of my students. So for me, the game was over. About one year, one month, and one day ago today, when I sat down my last class of students to tell them that I was not only leaving them, but I was leaving education entirely, it was like nothing I had ever felt before. Change is difficult. It's scary, but it's necessary for growth. So there I was, starting all over again, and I started with my passion of music, drumming, entrepreneurship, teaching. I assembled a team who felt the same way, and we started doing stuff. We found our purpose. We created a new way to discover, to learn, and to connect, and it's called Rhythm Monster. Rhythm, because there's rhythm in everything, and everything has rhythm, and monster, because that's what us cool music guys call the best of us, and we believe no matter who you are, you can be a monster too. We've already been quoted as the Khan Academy of Drumming and Percussion, and on the surface, we're an online music educational platform, but what we really do is provide access into these secret societies of music and culture. We work with public schools, universities, independent groups, and individuals in incorporating our monster resources into their live instructors and students. And I had no idea how to do any of this. Build a real website, start a real company, digital marketing, project management, sales funnels, DR, CRM, sell, blah, blah. I had no idea. I knew nothing. Now, we've set new standards in our market. Now, when I travel the world, I have people I've never met come up to me and say that they're learning and experiencing music because of Rhythm Monster. This is the power of teaching, learning, passion, and doing. I see the bridging of international and cultural divides by simply opening new doors of communication and inviting everyone in with rhythm and monsters. The current age of information it's only a couple decades old and two big movements have already started. This conversation is a part of the first, which is the revolution in education. The second is its opposition, anti-intellectualism. Now it seems that some of our students are subscribing to the latter and are often described as lazy and apathetic. And they are, and they will be, until we give them reason to be otherwise. Forcing tradition and ignoring innovation clearly doesn't work for them. But some kids aren't waiting on us. Of the many resources to learn what I've had to learn to build Rhythm Monster have come from kids in person and on YouTube channels. Seriously, how awesome is that? Imagine if everything and everyone in those kids' lives guided their passion and their purpose starting with those YouTube channels. Imagine the global issues they might solve if allowed to learn in a way that made sense to them. And finally, when it comes to innovation, the buddy rich of our lifetime is Mr. Steve Jobs. In his final public presentation, he said, to change our culture, technology alone is not enough. It's technology married with the liberal arts that yields us the results that make our hearts sing. I believe your passion has been singing your entire life, and the traditions of education have taught you to keep it quiet. 
Join this revolution and help change our news feeds by allowing every child to find their passion and their purpose. And never give up on another human being because of age or circumstance. There is no quick fix. But as long as you have a pulse, you have rhythm, which means you have the ability to influence. Our culture created this game. It's now our responsibility to change it. Be a living reflection of a new culture in education. Forever a teacher and always a student. Thank you.